And it's back. Welcome home. This is the Residency Podcast. I am Jeff Tomasic with Drew Belcher and Low Raven, bringing you the biggest guests and stories in entertainment, business, pop culture, and sports from our studio on the Las Vegas Strip inside the Mandalay Bay. Make sure to subscribe on Apple, Spotify, and YouTube. Today's episode is going to be crazy. We have MTV Challenge superstar, TV host, social media icon, podcaster, a little delayed getting here, but the man who literally branded a fruit, impressive. Jai Bananas, welcome to the show. What's good? Uh, you forgot uh, North America's number one slow dancer. That's true. Expert Parallel Parker. Ooh. I also, I had an 850 credit score up until about a month ago. Then I ran into some, some issues while I was so away, that's so that's dropped a little bit. That's but that funny. was another one of my accolades. But yeah, man, are hell of an good, intro. Are you that good at parallel parking? It's amazing. When you park, do you park forward or do you reverse in? Okay. And I got... No, Here's what's wrong with social media, and I know this is going off on a little bit of a tangent. Go ahead. I was at the gym the other day, and I'm on the treadmill looking out the, the window, and I see this guy in this massive truck, and this guy literally takes 10 minutes to back into a parking spot. <laughs> so I tweeted out, if you back into a parking space, you're an asshole. No. <laughs> and the really? amount of flack I got, this just goes to show how sensitive people are these days, because people were like getting so offended. My husband's a firefighter. He has to pull in. Someone else is like, you know, I've got a, you know, my, my, my dad is doing the cane. He had, I'm like, these aren't who I'm talking about. I'm talking about the jerk off at the gym that has to take a step ladder to get into his truck. This is a guy, you know, he has to make a right, whole right. song and dance about doing it. But no, the parallel parking thing, actually, the reason I say that is because I follow this Twitter account called like Tech Burrito. Okay, and yeah. they always tweet out really cool, like techie shit. And they showed like this GM like this, this, this mathematical equation of how to pull up next to the car next to you, how to turn your wheel, when to turn your wheel, and you will parallel park perfectly every time. So yeah, so I've added that to my repertoire. So you just dialed in for that. Dialed the fuck in, dude. So if you see yeah. someone backing into a parking spot, you're talking shit to them in your head. Absolutely. Hey, not, on Twitter, not on Twitter anymore, because you because now Twitter. anything on Twitter is offensive, dude. <laughs> Everything. I'm not going to lie, back into parking spots a lot. Do you really? Yeah. See, so does my brother, and I uh, call him out all the time. I was like, dude he, dude, he even backs into his fucking driveway at his house. Yeah. I, see, I don't do that. That's ridiculous. Yeah. For, for me, because here's why. Because a lot of people aren't doing it for like a convenience factor. They're doing it as like some like weird subtle flex. Yeah. It's I'm just, better than you. I prefer it's like, oh, yeah, let me hold on. Let me show you my fucking charger that still has the dealer <laughs> plates on it. It's like, oh, cool, man. Why do I think I'm saving awesome. time when I'm doing it? But either way, one way you have to back out and one way yeah. you have to pull in. I will say it's more convenient to pull out of the, the spot when you're when you're when you're you know, nose is facing out. That's but I mean. it's just, dude, it's just such a I don't know, man. I think you need not to do, my style. You need to do more effort when you get there so that when you're leaving, you feel better or something. It's almost like, do you want to save time on the front end or the back end? Right. Correct. It's like cleaning up bef like before you go to sleep rather than when you wake up. Yeah. Like knowing that you have to do all the work either way. But if you wake up, you'll be more pissed that it's dirty. It's like wiping your ass before you take a shit. Yes. <laughs> no, that's okay. There you go. Ah, there it so, is. So pointless. So pointless. <laughs> we were talking about day. We were talking about this the other day. We're like, why do people? Why do guys wash their hands after they piss? You should actually wash your hands before. I've said the same thing forever. Because your hands are the out touching everything. Touching everything. Dirty. I mean, unless you're, you know, who's dirty? You. The world or you? Exactly. The world. It's inside your pants. Unless you're wearing, unless you're wearing dirty underwear. I mean, your cleanest hands are my, dirtier. Cleanest part of my entire body is my dick, yeah. dude. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's, there it is. That's also a bold there statement. There it is. <laughs> bold statement. I wish I could say the same. Bold statement. Ah. <laughs> bold statement. This is what happens when you're in a relationship. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You have to say that. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, question: Does anyone use your last name like in your normal life, does or does everyone just call you Bananas from now on? Um, let's see. People, when I call like the American Airlines Advantage Desk, they always try and they butcher the shit out of it. Uh, um, I mean, obviously, m my friends and close close family members, but y you'd be shocked at how many people to this day, when they find out that Bananas isn't my real name, they're like they're like flabbergasted, just blown away. They're like, wait a minute, Bananas isn't your real name? It's like, no. That, I mean. Will but it's you? a lot easier. It's a lot easier than try. Most of the time, though, because my I do have a, my last name's Divanzio. A lot of syllables, a lot of letters. You can pronounce one end of that differently and totally butcher it. Exactly. Butcher. So I just usually tell people it's bananas. Bananas just makes it, just makes it easier. <laughs> Would you ever legally change it? I mean, I think. Listen, I think that's the only way I'm going to get my TikTok back because Johnny Bananas has been stolen by a seven year old. 
Yeah. Are you, are you in a TikTok battle right now? We are We are in a TikTok negotiation. Oh my God. All right, this kid's got 70 followers, hasn't posted in four months. And wants 100 grand. We haven't gotten to that part yet. He hasn't even, we're trying to still just get him to respond to, to, our, to our, uh, our request. We've reached out to TikTok and they're like, yeah, uh, we can't kick people due to inactivity. I'm like, but hold on. Instagram gave me Johnny Bananas. Twitter gave me Johnny Bananas. Facebook gave me Johnny Bananas. And I think TikTok just wants to be, they just want to be different. So yeah, no, Chi it's Chinese owned. Don't even talk to us. Yeah, they're like, sorry, get fucked. I mean, part of it, part of it is I actually had TikTok before TikTok was a thing. My manager, Dave, actually about, what was that, five years ago, hits me up. He goes, yo, there's this company called TikTok. They want you to, they're going to pay you like 10 grand to dance for 30 seconds. You got to sign up for an account. I was like, all right. So I like signed up, Johnny Bananas, signed up for an account, did this stupid 30 second dance, posted it, never went back to my account. And I guess somewhere in the interim, once TikTok blew up, Maybe they kicked me due to inactivity because oh, uh, was, I had was, that name at one time and now some little kid stole it from me. It was like musically before like yep, yep, musically yep, yes. before TikTok. It's so, all it was was just so like dumb dancing. God, don't you think there should be a system where if you have a certain level yes. of like followers, if a new so if a new like platform gets launched, you should have like first right of refusal. Listen, I sued HBO years ago. Okay. I sued Entourage and HBO for using the name Johnny Bananas. Even though I didn't have a trademark, in the entertainment industry, there's this thing called the right to publicity. And that means if you are in the entertainment industry and you are best known for a certain name or a certain likeness or a certain image, in the eyes of like the entertainment industry and the law, it's essentially a trademark. So did you win? So I didn't, <laughs> but <laughs> hold on. It wasn't because of the merits of the case. It was because the statute of limitations had ran out by a month. So the statute of limitations on defamation, which is what we sued for, is 12 months. We sued, we filed a suit 13 months after, after we, we, we made the claim. So I lost, but still made a splash. But my, but my point is, in the eyes of the law, Johnny Bananas belongs to me. You're you, Johnny Bananas. If you Google, if you put in Johnny Bananas, the first 10 pages of your Google search is is me so it's like why TikTok can't get that through their heads i don't i don't understand listen up TikTok. yeah this is what's gonna break this is what's gonna break it for us damn it everything um all right let's go to the challenge okay um really quick just off the top are you the greatest challenge athlete of all time uh i mean listen if we're talking strictly numbers uh most seasons won most dailies won um I had the highest bank account up until very recently. Uh, but yeah, by every metric out there, the answer is yes. Now, the argument a lot of times is, well, there, you know, there have been situations and they always bring up, obviously, CT when we're, we're always in the same conversation as like one and two. I'd say we're like one, one, eight, one, 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 eight, because it's like there are certain things that nobody on earth could do that that guy could do. But then at the same time, there's certain things that I'm capable of that, that, that no one else is too. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like comparing the two. I've always said it's almost unfair. It's like in boxing, that's why there's weight classes. You can't necessarily compare a heavyweight to a middleweight. You can't compare like what a middle linebacker and a defensive back have done. You know what I mean? Okay, I mean, there's just two completely analogy, different like skill sets. Okay. Me, you know, I have a very unique way of approaching the game. I have a very unique strategy. I have a very unique history and legacy and... I think that there's a lot of intangibles that I bring to the show that can't be quantified numerically. Right, right. Because um, I always bring, there's like that, as they say, like in French, like that je ne sais quoi, that thing that you can't necessarily put your finger on and you can't describe. Um, and it's just something that I feel like I was I was born with it. And it's something that like I've been able to bring to the television screen. I think over the years, I've been able to evolve and turn from just a cast member into a producer. And every season that I've ever been on, Whatever the storyline is that season, somehow, some way runs through me. It does. You're so, in, it does. Yeah. So, I mean, it's like, and that's something, it's like the, the, the challenge, a lot of people get so hung up on the challenge being this physical competition show, which it is, but the challenge is more of a mental and strategic game more than it is a physical game. 90% of the show is us sitting around the house just trying to not lose our damn minds and strategize and figure out how to navigate our way through the game. 10% is us competing. So it's what you fill the other 90% of the show with 
and what you bring to the table there, in my opinion, gets overlooked a lot, but I think that's almost as important, if not more important than, you know, the physical part. It's so funny, by the way, as fans, you don't see, you can't even, you can't grasp the other side of like the lulls in between it because we don't see any of it. Yeah. So it seems like so, no. like fast. Fast, bro. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a, it's like white collar prison. Just grueling. <laughs> All right. It's like, yeah, it's, it's, dude, they've, they've got it down to a science now where they know exactly what to give you and exactly what to take away and exactly how to form form the perfect environment to make it an absolute like pressure cooker. So no matter who you are, no matter how many seasons you've done, no matter what you've been through in the past, it's still every time it's gonna get on you. your skin somehow. You think that like, I've done 20, maybe 21 seasons at this point and You'd think it gets easier the more you do it. It really doesn't. In fact, it gets worse because you know what you're in for. I always look at the rookies coming in and they're all like, you know, bright eyed and bushy tailed, dude. They're like, oh man, the challenge. I love this show. I grew up watching it with my parents. Yeah, when I was eight years old, I used to watch you. I'm like, that's fucking cool. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> A week later, this same guy's like, how have you done this 21 times? And I'm like, I don't know. Don't know. I don't know the answer to that. But like when you when you go in there though, and even with everything that you know, they still curveball you each time. Oh, dude. The last season I did, which may or may not have already aired, um, it's like fucking curveball after curveball after curveball. And just when you think you've seen it all, right? And I go in every season and I'm like, dude, I've I've done dude, I don't even five hundred daily challenges probably in my career. Right. The fact that I could still go in and see daily challenges that still blow my mind, eliminations that still blow my mind, plot twists in the game. They, they, dude, they're 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 artists, man. Like they they these guys are, you know, these you guys know what are crazy must be fun is sitting with. at that round table of like, all right, guy, what, what yeah. are we gonna do? Yeah, what are we gonna do? How are we and gonna this do it? this guy, and then someone comes up with like a crazy idea and everyone gets the twinkle, like, oh yeah. Yes. Oh yeah. And some of the challenge, some of the challenges, some of the eliminations are like I remember I was talking to one of the, the, the uh, segment producers. The segment producers are the guys that, that, that create the games. And it was this uh, elimination where there were these like these posts in the ground. And as they and as they got further away and they were they were staggered as they got further away, they got taller and taller. And there was a rope that was wrapped in between them. Have you ever been in the backyard with your hose and it gets stuck on something? You have to like make like a like whip. Yeah, you have to like whip, whip a loop through it to get it over whatever it's stuck on. Yes. That was the point of this elimination. You had to like whip this rope and try and get the loop to go over the pole because you had to straighten your entire rope out. And the guy was telling me, he was like, I was at the gym the other day. I had one of the battle ropes. It was wrapped around two kettlebells. I, you know, whipped it twice. He got the kettlebell. He goes, there's a, there's a challenge. Wow. There, or there's an elimination. That's actually kind of a fun job. Yeah. Like, how do I make people's lives miserable? miserable. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It That's is. That's a fun part of it. They're a solid really, job. They are really good at it. And it's funny because like, that becomes our reality, right? Like we're trapped in this house for up to 10 weeks now and they've, th th they're masters at isolating us from the outside world and making the game really become our reality because it's like we really have no connection to what else is going on. And people watch the show all the time and they're just like, why do you get so fired up? Why does so-and-so cry? It's like because to you guys, you might just watch the show, but when we're there, like that's... The only what outlet. we've put into this, dude, right. and the amount of like sweat and tears and like just emotional fucking stress that we've put into it, like that becomes our reality. And it's funny because producers and people who work on production, even ones who've been there since the beginning, still this day, they're like, oh, why is it so bad? It's like, you'll never understand until you're in our position, until you have to deal with this. You put the game together and you watch us, but at the end of the day, guess what? You get to go back to your hotel, you get to go back to your loved ones, you get to like plug yourself back into your normal life. Do you know what it'd be like if you just think about it? If you took, in 2022, if you took someone's phone away for 10 weeks and just see how they slowly disintegrated a little bit and put them in a weird environment, just that would probably make a lot of people go crazy. And then you start throwing in challenge stuff and pissing everyone off, sex, making everyone angry, like money. Yeah. Then it explodes. But if you just do the cell phone part, it probably people probably go insane just from that. Actually, it's the exact opposite, dude. You think so? Me having my cell phone taken away now, to me, it's like, it's as if like a, it's as if like a, a, a you know, a weight around my neck has been lifted. Okay, that's fair. Because we are so, 
beholden and we're such slaves to these devices these days that like once they're taken away, a really funny thing happens. We talk about this every season. Because when you're usually, you go any anywhere today, you go to a Starbucks, you go to a bar, you go to fucking, you're waiting in line, you're in the car, you're always on your phone. People don't communicate anymore because when they're in an environment, their crutch is their phone, they go right to their phone so they don't talk to people around them. Yeah, yeah. With us in the house, once they take our phones away, we are forced to sit around and you get to know so much about people. You get and, and cre you like creative juices in your brain start flowing. We get creative as fuck in the in the, in the house because you have to. Yeah, you have no choice. We make games up. We make up. I mean, dude, we, like we, we you know, we, we, I, I brought my guitar last season. We're sitting around the campfire like, you know, play like it's like it's crazy how you start to like revert back to being like a child. Get hobbies and like do you things. You get hobbies. Like you create games because it's like you have nothing else to do. And this almost like stunts your your creativity and, be, and and once this is gone and you're not on your phone all day it's like dude your communication skills like you learn about people like you talk god forbid like we don't do any you know everything now is done through like tech so yeah. it, it's crazy like once the phones are taken away what a relief it is yeah i feel like for you welcoming it and going into it, I mean, for like a normal yeah. person, like they don't understand the stress, like, no. you know what I'm saying? Like, and not having that crutch, that's Dude. the stress. I mean, like you not having that and having to talk to you or like be in the drama and not have an escape or whatever it may be. Fucking hard. I've just got know. so much on a daily basis, dude. There's so many, so many things pulling me so many different directions that me going on, on the challenge, it's like, I can literally cut myself off from all of that, dude. Just focus. Now I'm subjecting myself to a whole different type of mental anguish and torture. It's like I'm, I'm almost like swapping one out for the other, but it really is nice to every once in a while take like a break, disconnect, unplug, and just and just not have to be, you know. Except you love the challenge torture. I, I, listen, you know <laughs> what it is? I, I love it for the same reason that I love a dysfunctional relationship. You know yeah, what I mean? Sure. It's like you can't get out of it. It's like, you're like, I know this is bad for me. My friends and family, they all tell me that like, you know, she's not right for me, but there's something about it that like keeps me coming back. That's how the challenge is. But does, I, I feel like once you did the challenge for that long and you like fed off of that, like yeah. doesn't a lot of other shit become really boring? Like that's an extreme thing for you to do for so long that I feel like over like, a, like oh man, I'm so sick. I'm so like, I've done it for so long. I'm tired, blah, blah, blah. And then you, like a couple months goes by and you're like, Man, everyone's kind of everyone kind of sucks. It <laughs> doesn't it's like, real life is really boring. It doesn't necessarily make life boring. It makes life in certain circumstances easier to cope with. For example, and, and it's so funny that this like I don't know like like I thought about this when we were there. I went to uh, Ukraine uh, right at the beginning of the, uh, right, like the when the war broke out. We went over there on this humanitarian mission, and we literally went from we flew into Poland and we drove into Ukraine to deliver humanitarian supplies to Lviv before it got lit up with Tomahawk missiles. But so we're on the Polish side. We're in this humanitarian convoy. We're in a um, like a sprinter van with Red Cross stickers put all over. And we're sitting there waiting to drive in and ready to cross the border. And everyone is just dead silent, dude. Everyone's just sitting there like, cause we're all thinking the exact same thing. And I'm like, this is exactly, but everyone else is, is dealing with completely differently. Whereas I'm sitting there and I'm like, all right, this feels familiar to me because this is what it feels like every time before we're going into a challenge. We're on a bus. We don't know where we're going or what we're about to show up to. We don't know what the, yeah, the, yeah. the, the and there's this pit in your stomach, dude. Because and no matter how many times you do, you're just stressed out because you don't know what is around the corner. I get that. And I've dealt with that so many times, and I've had that feeling so many times, it's and I've been on that right? bus so many times that sitting in this van about to cross the border into Ukraine, not knowing what we're gonna drive into, I was almost like, I can actually handle this better right. than everybody else okay. can because I've like I've dealt with it before. Yeah. You know? I could see how that really yeah. changes everything. Yeah. I, I feel like once you get that. I could see why you keep going back. Like, I could see why you keep going back. Just there's like only so many things that can, like we talked a lot of pro athletes on the show were like, what's running out of the tunnel on the field? Like, oh, dude. and there's just these feelings that you have and you become so accustomed to them. And then like you try to replace them in your life, just like when anyone like retires or whatever. And that's just like trying to recreate that must be tough. It's that adrenaline. Like that's what they say. Adrenaline is addictive, dude. And, and the thing is about the challenge, like 
even if you don't necessarily win, we'll do some very, very, very death-defying stunts, dude. Dangling off buildings, jumping on semi-trucks, uh, you know, jumping, uh, you know, platforms 25 feet over the water. And when you finish that, when you actually complete it, there's this feeling of like accomplishment and just like joy, mostly because you're like, wow, I might've just won today, but mostly I didn't just die. You know what I mean? Also a positive. Fair. Same with eliminations, especially you go through a really physical elimination, like man in the sand, like mano a mano, you come out of one of those and you know, that's like your moment, dude. You're under the lights, everyone's watching. This is gonna be, you know, on TV, this is your game. It's like that feeling you get from winning an elimination or, you know, winning a daily challenge or winning a challenge, there's no other, there's no other feeling like it on earth, dude. I feel like someone needs like, we start a business where we're just like, do like a weekly, like at someone needs like a weekly adrenaline pump and it's like the challenge and you just have like a weird thing every yeah. week. Like, yo, I just need my fix. I feel like I need that. I don't need the full on complete show, but I need that like once a week. Yeah. Off offline, we're gonna we're gonna okay. We got All this right, guys. yeah, yeah, we we'll, got we'll, this, guys. It'll be for a challenge the Johnny Bananas the residency theme park. I love it coming to the Vegas desert. And you know what? Every there's because there are so many fans out there who've grown up watching me. I mean, dude, I'm I just turned forty, and a, a lot of my most diehard supporters are my age, maybe a little bit older, maybe a little bit younger. Who started watching me like when I was on the real world? Yeah, yeah. my girl and I are thirty five. We've yeah. been watching the show. Yeah. yeah. For fucking ever. Yeah. We're in the forever. Gap. We're so in the age we're, 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 we're yeah, dedicated. We're I tell you, <laughs> once a day, I get multiple messages, DMs even from, from guys and girls alike, and they're just like, man, I'm living vicariously through you. Like, grew up watching you. Now I'm married. Now I have kids, blah, blah, blah. Being able to watch. Like, I wish I could, like, do some of the things that, that uh, go on the challenges and, and, and compete in the same way. There's people that have challenge-themed birthday parties or, or, or you know, bachelorette, bachelor parties. Yeah. And I'm like, it really would be cool if we, after whatever location we film at, okay, you're able to rent the house that we lived in. Yeah. And you're able to go and like, do like a couple of like the actual challenges at the actual locations that that that, that we did it. You know I what I mean? That. I need that adrenaline. I yeah. Need the, I need just the challenge adrenaline like fuel on a weekly basis. It's like as a, as a, as a uh, Call of Duty fan, I don't know if you guys are, yeah, are gamers. Yeah, All right. You know, like there's certain maps that when you look back on them, you're just like, like airports, one of them. Sure. Uh, uh, what was the other one? Nuketown. Like there's certain maps and certain boards that you watch. And I was like, what they should do is make a paintball course where you could go and play in these exact same courses, dude. Set up exactly like that. Cause that's as a gamer, exists, right? cause as a gamer, I would fucking love that. I'm like, dude, I've been in this house a hundred times, but they should do the same with the challenge where it's like for hardcore diehard fans, let fans go and you know live vicariously. Do exactly what 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 we were able. The to only do. way that works is it has to be in Vegas. Yeah, exactly. everyone comes to yep. Vegas, and it, you have to do a licensing deal with MTV to use the logos yeah. and everything else. Yeah, and TJ ha TJ lives in Vegas. TJ lives here. We've had him. On and the he's show. got a huge backyard, by the way. Yeah. We can do it in his backyard. Do it at, <laughs> do it at fucking TJ's house, dude. <laughs> Guys, we just started a business on yeah. the podcast. This is unbelievable. You're welcome. 2023. Yeah. We'll see you all there. And don't try and steal our business idea. Yeah, don't my, be my, assholes my, about it. Yeah, we already have a patent on it. My, yeah. my lawyer is actually sitting right next to me right now. <laughs> HBO, we're not going to 13 month yeah. this time. Yeah, you saw what I did to HBO. You don't want these problems. <laughs> yeah, don't get this smoke. Uh, all, right, another, all right, another question. Is there a pro sport that you think the challenge is harder than? Golf? <laughs> oh, there we go. We're gonna ruffle some feathers, dude. Here it. we go. I fucking knew it. I knew it. Golf's really hard, but yeah. All hard. right, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. From a mental standpoint, and from and from and from like technique, because obviously as someone who's tried to swing a golf club before, it's fucking hard. But you don't have to be an athlete to be a golfer. I'm sorry. From if we're talking strictly from, if that was the case, John Daly could have not have been a. a a, a a pro golfer. Okay, I'm probably gonna ruffle some feathers here. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, dude. Like, to, if you're a, ba a football player, basketball player, even baseball player, even though some pitchers like Bartolo Colon were able to like make Thick. careers out of, yeah, you know, whatever. It's like you need to have, I mean, agility. You need to have stamina. You need to have endurance. You need to be like fit, dude. You know what I mean? You need to be able to go like hard in the paint for a long time. 
golfing, I'm sorry, man. Half the time you're just walking around a beautiful golf course, dude. You're in a you got a caddy who's carrying your clubs for you. <laughs> you're not you even gotta, carrying your you, clubs. You gotta swing a you gotta swing a a, 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 a club every now and then. Can like, you please look into the camera and invite John Daly to an MTV Challenge spinoff? <laughs> like the pros. Of John <laughs> Daly, I challenge you. Johnny Bananas, I challenge John Daly to come uh, to our world and uh, see what the challenge is really all about. <laughs> and listen, here's the deal. I'll caddy for you in the next. You come to a challenge. We'll see how you do. And then I'll come and caddy for you and we'll see who does better in the uh, respective uh, sports. The challenge of the challenge of the challenge has been proposed. Yeah. But not, that it's, not to take anything away from golfers because it does require skill. Of course. I, it, it, is, it, it requires a tremendous amount of skill. I just don't think it requires a tremendous amount of athleticism. Here's the one thing that I will say, and I've always said this about the challenge, and this is why it is the fifth major American sport. As, <laughs> as Bill Simmons, my mentor, once said, he coined that phrase, by the way. It's because the, 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 what makes the challenge so difficult and what separates it from every other sport is this. Whether you play football, whether you play baseball, whether you play soccer, whether you play volleyball, tennis, golf, the X's and the O's are always the same, right? Now, the person you're playing against might be different or the team you're playing against, but the rules of the game are, are, are pretty much always the same. The challenge, we are showing up, we're doing something we've never done before. We get one time to do it, have, having never practiced it, yeah, and we'll probably never do it again. We don't get to practice. It's not like other sports where it's like, all right, you know, if you're a golfer, whatever, you're swinging, the, uh, you're practicing every day, swinging a, a golf club. You're a pitcher, you're a catcher. If you're shooting a basketball, you're making doing those these same movements every day, and then you perfect these mo these movements. With us, we have to be able to do anything and everything at a moment's notice, having never practiced it before. Also, they've been doing it since they were five. Yeah, well, I've been doing this since I was 23. So <laughs> same, 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 but different. But, but, that's, but that's the thing. So the amount of, you have to, I mean, the amount of adaptability, the amount of mental, just, I mean, focus and the amount of pressure that, that you have to, you know, perform and operate under. People are always like, oh, you can't compare yourself to athletes. You're right. I can't run a 4-2-40. I can't throw a 100 mile an hour fastball. But what makes me the same as a lot of these athletes is the fact that it's like I can perform under the most pressure cooker scenarios and perform well doing it. You know what I mean? And and I'm able to do a lot of things that we've had athletes, dude. We've had professional athletes on the show. I beat Terrell Owens in a challenge. That was one of our questions. Is like, why do you think a lot of pro athletes never did well on the challenge spinoff shows? For the reasons I just explained to you. Yeah. The thing is, the, 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 because they're used to everything. First of all, they're used to playing a game where there's rules. Right, right. And right. everything's fair. And this one is just changed. Just in, in a there's no notice. fucking rules, yeah, dude. Yeah. All, as I, you know, as like the friend, you know, all's fair in love, war, and challenges. Because, dude, the game constantly changes. The game is constantly evolving. There are no rules. It's basically whatever TJ feels is fair that day. And you're prepared for that. When you see the yeah. pro athletes get super frustrated because they, they think about the rules and yes. then the rules change 10 degrees and then yeah. 10 degrees again. But again, they're also used to, it's almost like if you think about it like this, if you're a professional athlete in a professional sport, you're very used to, to being very good moving forward and backwards. But then the challenge makes you move laterally. You know what I mean? So this is like, you can't, and, and that's the thing is with a lot of professional athletes, they have been they have been conditioned and honed to do one thing very well. With the challenge, you have to do everything very. I mean, there's nothing you can be an expert at, but it's like you have to just do a lot. I always say this. I'm a jack of all trades, master of none. Yeah, that's I guess that's the difference between being on the challenge and being a professional athlete. When you're a professional athlete, you're a master Incredible of a one trade. Thing. When you're on the challenge, you have to be a jack of all trades. Yeah, because yeah, that you're right. Because a lot of people in the challenge usually get smoked by that one thing they're not good at, yeah. whether it's the puzzles or swimming, so, or endurance or strength or whatever. So when I went up against Terrell, so me and T.O. went up in this. Uh, it was a parkour course. So what we had to do is we had to. There was it was like ultimate tag, where basically there was an offensive guy and a defensive guy. The offensive guy takes off running and has to collect as many flags as he can, but they're like different numerical values. So the harder the flags are to get, the more they're worth. So there's like you know, blocks you can climb on. There's like a little cat, a little toy castle. There's like all these little, you know, uh, corridors and hallways and monkey bars and stuff. So he went first and he got caught in this little corridor and I tagged him out. So he was over. And then with me, 
when I went, I mean, dude, I, I'm jumping up on all these little things. Like I'm like a little fucking mouse running around this thing. And he couldn't, he couldn't get me <laughs> until I hit the floor and I tried this run across to the other side. And once he had open space and once it was like just a straight sprint, dude, quick, I was done. Yeah. So that's the thing. And that, that was his wheelhouse, dude. You know, it's obviously straight breakaway speed, dude. You ain't, you ain't beating that guy in a foot race. But you, you look at the cha- you look at the challenges differently than he probably does just from like a, a strategic standpoint, or I, yeah. I've done this for something kind of like this or whatever. Absolutely. Maybe. Yeah. 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 Sick. All right. That's I, playing, playing pro athletes who are really good at their sport in your world has to be pretty cool. It's awesome, dude. I mean, Lolo Jones, Sean Merriman, uh, uh, Sean Johnson, who was Olympian, T.O., Kim Glass, who was an Olympic volleyball player. I mean, yeah, it, it really is cool, like, being able to look at these professional. You know what's cool? It's it's because we're always compared to professional athletes, so it's really cool to watch a professional athlete try and do what we do and do terrible at it. <laughs> Dude, it's true. It can actually mean, pump you up a little bit. I mean, listen, if I went out on a football field and tried to run a route, I'd shit the bed, too. But I'm just saying, I mean, it's, you know. That's how that's what happens. Yeah, you cross that's over. fair. Exactly. That's fair. By the way, is Lolo Jones one of the most intense people ever she's intense dude <laughs> just like she is very very intense but but i guess but that's what makes these that's what makes professional athletes i mean you have to be a little you have to be a, a, a little out there yeah. you got to be wired differently to be as good to do something like that where you're like i'm going to dedicate my life to just running and jumping Sprinting. over shit right and do <laughs> that 10 hours a day every day for whatever 20 years like you got to be a little a, a little crazy a little to, nuts, to do, yeah. yeah to do that yeah that is true right that sounds like not a career that i want we never do it but professional podcasting is going to be an olympic sport coming soon <laughs> as it should be we'll see yeah. exactly the sixth this shit the, ain't easy man exactly i started a podcast about i'm you, you guys said you're at like 109 episodes i don't know i've done like 40 and dude, I'm not going to lie, like just every week being like, all right, I got to figure out who my next guest is. I got to like do some research and figure out what we're going to talk about. I got to fill an hour's worth of space because you know how good they're going to be, it's you hard. know, as far as guests are. And it's stressful, man. Well, well, Bill Simmons did say that podcasting was the sixth American sport. Oh, after, did he? After the challenge yet. I mean, it well, just, you know what? He, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not surprised he said that because I because then that makes him an athlete. That, so. Yeah, exactly. See? <laughs> it makes total sense. Thanks, Bill. Thanks, Bill. Appreciate yeah. you. Um, do you get preferential treatment because you're like one of the main characters on the challenge in any way? I mean, Yes obviously but it's not the way you may think it's not like they're like oh we're gonna we're gonna uh you know make the game we're, we're gonna cut corners make the game easier for you it, but it's like i've been i've been around longer than most of the producers on the show right okay like i've i'm literally watching like i remember i used to my first few seasons and i used to be you know the youngest guy one of the youngest guys there now i'm like the oldest one so it's like it's more from just like a respect they, I'm just treated differently as far as like, I'm not treated like a child. Okay. A lot of times production producers will come up to me and be like, Hey, Saturday's our day off. What should we do? You know, you've done, you've been here, you've done this before. What should we do? Or, uh, you know, we're having, you know, we're, uh, we're changing up catering. Like, what do you want? The food? So a lot of times they'll come because I've been there so many times and they'll ask me just kind of like what we should do in that regard. Um, and that's what it, because it's like a lot of these kids come in and they have to be treated like children because I mean, with, with, again, with the environment that we're placed in and with the amount of like drinking that's done and with the amount of like rules, a lot of them come in and it's just like, it's like lawless. You know what I mean? So I almost at, at this point, I feel true. like I'm like a chaperone dude. Like I'm there and I almost feel like I'm production times. Like, yeah, let me wrangle up so-and-so he's, you know. Fucking in, who knows? He disappeared. He's you know hanging by his, from his balls in the bathroom. Like 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 I got this. That used to be me. Half player, half coach type of, yeah, type of dude, situation. Yeah, yeah. By yeah. the way, rumor I heard this. Is it true that the new players have to pay for their alcohol? And that's how it's always been. Really? When we go out, when we go out, drinks are on us. When we're at home, drinks are on. We don't have to pay. But they've gotten so crazy now with alcohol restrictions, dude. It's like, it's like they give out like drink tickets. <laughs> they have like a little, they'll have a clipboard and they'll be like, all right, bananas. It's like Betty Ford. Bananas, you've had two drinks, you know, and if cut you, off for the next two hours. Yeah, that's enough. Really? So, whereas the way it used to be, dude, don't die. Bro, <laughs> don't die. You're good. You want know how it used to be? This, the challenge used to be like the fucking Wild West, dude. We used to have an alcohol closet, all right? Like a room in the house was dedicated to just booze. 
and they would go, production would be like, all right, guys, we have a $1,500 a week budget that must be spent on alcohol. They couldn't order it though, so they'd have to get a cast member to order one of us for some, I don't know, legal reason. They yeah. couldn't order the alcohol, so we had to. All right. <laughs> so I'd get on the phone and I'd be like, all right, guys, what do we want? All right, uh, 40 bottles of red wine, 60 bottles of white, 15 bottles of vodka, 10 bottles of tequila. How much, uh, how much money we still got to spend? All right. 18 bottles of Jack Daniels. And this was like every week, man. And it was just there whenever you wanted, dude. Any time of day you could just, but it was like, people were getting fucked up all the time. The you good know? old days, you know? The good old days. Good now, old like days, I said, you know? it's like straight Betty Ford, dude. It's like, nap. you hit your, dude, I'll, I'll never forget. Like we used to go in and like the first night was like the party night when it was just like, yeah, dude, I mean, it was just like a full tilt, like all hands on deck. People were just like getting fucking twisted. Now, first night, it's like, all right, here's a bottle of champagne because we want the toast. Here's a 12 pack of beer and here's one bottle of vodka. It's like there's 32 people in the house. Right. Just keep it calm. Do they even, do you normally have like a couple of days of like relax and tune into it? Or are you like, we into used it off to, the but now it's like you're, you're straight into the fire. Yeah, just straight go. in the fire, dude. Yeah, so no one wants to be hung over anyway. They want. No, like I mean, yeah, we've made that mistake in the past. I remember. I'll never forget. I've never. I've never skydived in my life. Skydived. Skydove. 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 Skydive. skydive. I don't know. Skydove. That's a weird one. That's a weird one. <laughs> Is it skydove, skydove or skydive? Skydive. I've never skydiven. Sky right. <laughs> skydove. Skydive. I haven't skydove. All right, so. Uh, this is Rivals 3. This is the infamous season where I still, where I took all the money from Sarah. Uh, but we get there. We're in Mexico. And night one, and this is before they did the alcohol. I mean, it was just like, bro, out more booze than you knew what to do with, dude. I mean, I mean, more beer, vodka, wine, champagne. Like, we're getting absolutely obliterated, dude. And like 1, 2 a.m. rolls around. I'm like hammered. I'm seeing like triple. And Sarah comes out and goes, we got a clue from TJ. And it said some hint about skydiving. And I'm like, get the fuck out of here, dude. Like, we're going to go skydiving tomorrow. So so they didn't bother telling us it's about 2 a.m. Everyone's just, obliterated. Just vodka stomach in your throat. And now you're going to go skydiving the next day. Like so it. we show up to this skydiving, whatever you call it, area. <laughs> and we're all just like, everyone is just hung over and just laying on the floor and it's hot. You're in Mexico in the middle of summer, dude, sweating. And, and you know, you get like the really bad, like, I don't know if you do, but I get really bad anxiety when I'm hung over. Same, same. Yeah, especially if, my, I'm, if I'm hung over and about to go skydiving. I'm, sure. my, my anxiety is like DEFCON 7, dude. And now I'm like, I got to go skydiving right now. Like, what if I, so dude, that was like the worst, man. We had to literally go from being drunk. I think I was still drunk to jumping out of an airplane, dude, in Mexico. Watching these guys, because they were just going, because we had to do it, there was 30 of us, and they could only take eight people at a time. So they had to do, like, you know, how many different rounds, five different rounds. I don't know if my math's even correct there. But uh, you're watching these guys. They come down. They run back into the thing. They pack their own chute in front of us. These guys are just sitting on the floor repacking their chutes, and I'm just like, is this Just the tandem guys. Is this safe? <laughs> Is there like a safety expert that's going to check to make off? sure yeah. this guy's just really nonchalant or about it? Or we're just trusting this guy that's like sweating his dick off, dude, who's, who's done this seven times or just to, to... Speaking no English to you, probably. Zero. Yeah. <laughs> just zero. <laughs> I'm like, dude, oh, this is... Fuck, this is there's some American rules at least I can read, please. Have you ever yeah. been skydiving? Never. Oh, my God. I, I just did indoor skydiving last week. I know it's super pussy compared to real Definitely skydiving. not real. But uh, yeah, bro, I was so sore. <laughs> You gotta put your arms out. And just yeah, it's do, you wanna, said, do you want to go real sky? It's a blast. This no, guy I said know. I did indoor sky diving. It's, it's a blast. It's a blast. So I had I had face I had the Facebook VR right. I went skydiving. Yeah. yeah. No, it's real fun. It's fun, dude. It's, it's awesome. Have you well, ever no. played? Have you ever played football? Nah, man. But I played Madden before. Yeah, I yeah, played same, Madden. Yeah. Kind of same. Well, same, same, well, same, same, same. At our theme park that we're building, there's gonna be uh, you know real skydiving, no indoor skydiving. You know yeah, I mean? and we're gonna have the same guys from Huatulco, Mexico. Yeah, we're importing from Mexico. Yeah, dude. Um, who I have a question uh, from as far as like all the athletes, so this massive family that you guys have. Who's had the best career after the MTV reality show era? Do you think? Oh, dude, there's been. I mean, there's a few people, dude. I'll say um, Theo Vaughn, who's I mean one of I'm, I'm one of Hilarious. my favorite guys out there. I mean, dude, one Hilarious. of one of the biggest comedians out there. Uh, Jamie uh, Jamie Chung, who was on Real World San Diego, is yep. a very accomplished actress. 
Sean Duffy after the real world, he did a challenger too, was a congressman. Now he's like a huge, like, you know, uh, he's in broadcasting now. Um, who else? Uh, dude, Mike the Miz. Yeah, we were the saying Miz. We were saying the Miz. Dude, yeah. like, look at that guy. He's like the WWE, you know, champion of the world. Um, so, dude, like, I'm. It, it's so cool to watch. You know, they say like rising tides raise all ships, dude. It's really cool to see all these people who've come from the same world be as successful as they are and, and doing the amazing things that they're doing now. Because, um, you know, we're this really like tight knit dysfunctional family and it's like you just want to see them you know just you just all you do you just hope for success for for your people you know what i mean yeah there's been some like you said some massive yeah. success stories since yeah. then does like the challenge mtv world do you guys cross over a lot with any of the other mtv shows like if you've done a lot with sort of not really like a jersey um, a jersey shore challenge collab has that ever happened they've tried to do that but dude jersey shore gets smoked there's no shot those guys all have pop those are beach muscles dude yeah <laughs> <laughs> Those are built for comfort, not for speed, dude. You know, um, no, I mean, and they, they've actually proposed that in the past, but I think what it would cost to get them to agree to, to do a season Crazy. of the challenge. Plus a lot of them now are, you know, have kids yeah. married. Paulie D's <laughs> in Vegas every week, man. Paulie yeah. D's Con DJing in Vegas every Convicted week. Convicted felons. Like, I just don't know if, uh, sorry, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> not, no, Paulie's No, Paulie's the man, dude. Um, but, uh, but we have, we've done, we've done, events with different people from uh, uh, Floribama Shore, from um, Jersey Shore. Uh, what's the other one that I was just thinking about? Siesta Key. I mean, we were considering that an MTV show. Um, so yeah, so we do- we, So we, many of them now. So we do certain things with, with, with different people, but they're, they're, they're very, MTV's just weird how it's like they want to keep every little- Like on their own- In eye. their own sure, little sure, box, right. yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Makes sense. Um, all right, I do. Everybody wants to know. So here's the question. And he might, may or may not break some news right now. I don't know. But everybody wants to know, when are you coming back to the challenge? Well, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what. Anyone that has any sort of uh, social media, if you just like, I don't know, Googled the challenge, uh, a lot of information would probably come out. A lot of information is already out there. Uh, I may or may not have already recorded one that may or may not be uh, airing uh, sometime next month. Uh, but, dude, listen, I took a much needed mental and physical break. Um, I had done 13 seasons in a row uh, after my last win on, on Total Madness. And I realized, dude, that like I, I really did. I needed to take a break. And you know what I needed? Not only did I need a break, I feel like the fans needed a break from me. Okay. Like they, I needed to be missed. You know what I mean? I That's feel like fair. I wasn't being missed. At what is the absence makes the heart grow fonder? Yeah, or the mind wander. Like, I mean, it depends on what, what school you're from. But I think by me stepping away for a while, what it, what it made a lot of people realize, love me or hate me, is how important I, I am to the fucking show. The utmost important. So, yeah, and a lot of the other years too, there's been so many new people, whereas for a long time, there was like a lot of familiar faces all the time. And yeah. now it's kind of like, 70% new people every season, 30% like, oh, and, and what's so funny is I, cause I get it every season, dude. There's so many, listen, I, I got a lot. There's a lot of Johnny Bananas fans out there, but there's a lot of haters, which I like to say are actually my biggest fans. They're just in disguise, but, and they would be like, I don't want to see your face on TV anymore. I'm sick of you. We need new people. Then I take two years off. These same people are like, all right, now listen, I know I was talking shit a while ago. I know I said how much I hated seeing you, but Whatever this is now, this is, uh, I mean, this is insufferable. Please come back. So I have someone to root against. Because that's the thing is like people, and I'm fine with that, dude. People root against me just as much as they root for me. But I think that, that they're, the reason that there are certain of us that have been around for as long as we have is because we're just good at the game, dude. And we just know how to make good TV. But it's it's like a, it's a regular TV irreplaceable, show. Irreplaceable, yeah. You're a character, you like you... You vibe with a character over time. Yes. And once someone's in the seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth season of a show, yeah. they're, they're, the show is, of course, they like the show, but the characters are who they're like. I, I, can, I always compare it to like learning new technology, right? The older you get, the less you want to learn how something fucking works, right? Yeah. Like whether it's an whether it's a app on a phone, whether it's a new phone, new computer, whatever. And I, it, it's almost like I'm happy with what I got. I don't want to learn something new. I don't want to learn a new operating system because I'm good with what I got. It's the same with challenge cast members, I feel like. Because the challenge is a very unique fan base where we're the only show on MTV that that ha that we obviously skew to, to, to an older demographic, but that's because the fans who've been watching the show have been watching for 
17, years. 20 years, dude. Sure. Years. And they've grown up watching the same cast members, dude. And they've and they've and they've lived their 20s and 30s and 40s or whatever with the same people. And it's like you introduce a bunch of idiots from like Big Brother and Love Island and 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 Survivor, and they're like, I'm good. You can't have it. I'm good. Or, or you, you can't can do that. Or you can have a couple, but you can't have seventy uh, percent of them. Do you no, know what I mean? No. Yeah. You can't do that. The consumers know they they want. It. So I know when I watch. Yes. It, we know you're going deep into the season. You're going to perform well in all the challenges. You're going to give us a little drama, and you're just you're going to be there for the entertainment that we all crave and want. That's yeah. why we fucking tune in. Yeah, you need to turn it up. That's why we tune in. Probably going to end up under the sheets with a rookie, but yeah, of man, course. I mean, just, uh, Episode one. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> the body count. The, real, real body the count. banana there pops is, out. There Damn, is, there dude. Is. Yeah. Uh, we're not mad about it. So it makes good television. That's people. why we watch it. That's what I do. And I'm doing it for the fans. Everyone's like, man, like, is this like your, this is your MO, dude. It's like, you know, it's rookies. And I'm like, well, I mean, it's for you guys. I'm just trying to provide a little entertainment here. All by right. The way, by the way, when you win a challenge, do you get like a, a ring, a belt, anything? No. They need a belt. What's going no, on? No, but when I won my seventh, I bought some rings. Uh, everyone asked me, they go, D where'd you, did you buy those? I'm like, yeah, I got them on Amazon. I did them for, I, I copied the, 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 um, uh, Michael Jordan seven rings photo shoot. There you go. Right. Where, where he has the rings on. I saw that. Yeah. Yeah. People were like, almost like they, as if they were like exposing something like they didn't give you bought those. I'm like, yeah, no shit. Like <laughs> the fuck you can't uh, tell. I feel like there should be like. There something. should. Yeah, a ring, a bell. What's going something. on? Something. I mean, YouTube gives you a, 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 yeah, a, a freaking plaque. Plaque, plaque when you get 100,000 followers. I'm yeah. like, come on. Nothing? There's award shows for everything on the planet now, right? You can't get Yeah, yeah, except for us. I mean, I, I will. The one positive thing is the prize money has gone up Sub substantially. Drastically over yeah, the years. Yeah, well, but so has the mental anguish we have to go through to get that prize okay, money. 100, I'll tell you million, what. I'll tell you anguish. what. I wish they were giving away a million dollars back when I was in my, you know, my reign when I was winning back to back, you know, championships. But that's what you need now to tune in because I think money has changed so dramatically in general. Like if so you do, much. You do a big reality show and like the winner is going to get twenty five thousand dollars. Everyone's like, all right, come on, bro. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I saw someone on YouTube today giving away six cars, three houses, two Lamborghinis, and a million bucks to people well, on the street. I was shocked. I was talking to Dave about the purse for the UFC fight. He goes, yeah, it's you know. $100,000, $200,000. I'm like, this guy has to go and get the shit kicked out of him for God and possibly knocked out. And not crazy that's at all. all they're, that's all this guy's making. Not crazy at that's all. That's it. Yeah. It's really like, a, like a, for the majority of people besides like the main superstars, it's a kind of like what reality shows are. It's a platform to get recognized yeah, and to see where your career dude, goes. And I know, man, that. but what a, what a tough what, one to be in. That is sure. a tough, that is it. I, I, I hand it to those guys, man, because they're, they're cut from a different cloth, dude. Other other question is I always thought this was a hilarious human experiment is that you take all these people who go through all these things and then something happens like someone wins, someone loses, people are upset, especially towards the very end. And then you put them all together again. What's the MTV reunion oh, dude. like? Like those have to be crazy. They are sometimes and they're not. And here's why. Because cast members are so stupid. All right. We, usually they're in New York. We usually film it at fifteen fifteen Broadway. Uh, sometimes we film it elsewhere, but and they put us all in the same hotel. And usually we fly in the night before. And these morons cannot wait to all get together, post stories together. Every single one of them has to involve. They get annihilated the night before. These reunion shows we film sometimes for ten hours. We oh, are wow. sitting on stage for ten hours. Answering questions because a lot of times they're two parts, and everybody Ten shows hours? up. Yeah, dude, everybody shows up, and our call times early, it's eight, some seven, eight a.m., and everybody shows up hungover, bloodshot eyes, like just like wrecked. And I'm always like, because I know I'm like, how dumb are you guys? Like you knew that we were gonna be filming all day today. I don't feel bad for for any of you. So that kind of sometimes tempers a little bit of the the, the, the excitement. But it's nuts, dude. It's like because a lot of times when you do these reunion shows, you're seeing a lot of things that people said and did for the first time. Yeah. There's a lot of unseen, unaired stuff that that's always where you're like, when the unaired <laughs> segment comes out, you're like, oh, fuck. What the <laughs> you like sink in your chair. You're like, oh, my God, what's what, what, what's, you know, <laughs> when we come back, we're going to show some footage that, you know, 
some hidden camera footage that nobody knew was filmed, then you're just like, dude, kill me, right? Like, you just want your soul to leave your body, dude. I, you know? I think it's incredible, especially with social media, when, like, this should, this should also be a separate show, like a confrontation thing, but it's hilarious to see when someone tweets out something like calling someone out or, like, talking shit, and then puts it on a massive screen and reads it out loud and then says like, so what do you think about yes. what he said to you? Yeah. And, th and they're in the same room together. I think that's the best television ever. I think it's incredible. I mean, it really is because they have no time to prepare for it. And it is like hundred percent like authentic and there's no, there's no hiding from so it. Pissed. It's right there, dude. And yeah. they got the deleted tweets still. They got the yep. receipts. They yeah. have everything. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. good shit. I mean, they, uh, if that's one thing on those reunion shows, man, they know how to, they know, they know how to, uh, they know how to catch you slipping, dude. <laughs> they know how to catch you slipping, man. Or like if that one thing that you thought that no one saw, they yep. saw. Oh yeah. Oh, they saw. Oh yeah. yeah um, it's, it's terrifying. That's fucking amazing, dude. I love yeah. it. Uh, by the way, what's the worst food you had on the challenge? Um, there's been a few locations where the food has been god awful. Uh, Uruguay was really bad, um, mainly because the house that we lived at was so far away from any sort of civilization. Like, I remember this one time they showed up and they and, and for lunch it was spaghetti noodles with no sauce, just noodles, and this hot dog that was rolled up like it looked like a mosquito coil. This thing was rolled up. It was probably, if you unrolled it, it was probably seven feet long. But it was just one hot dog that was just in this concentric circles, dude, rolled up in this in this pan. And this was supposed to be our lunch. We, we didn't eat it, okay? We didn't eat the pasta or the 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 hot dog. So guess what they served us from, from dinner? That hot dog chopped up in the pasta that we didn't eat. Sold. <laughs> dude, <laughs> Thailand was actually... The Thai food was actually really good. It's just, if you try and eat Thai food for six straight weeks, there's something about those seasonings, the, 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 that, that Thai basil or the, the lemon grass or whatever they use, that seasoning gets very, very, very old. You know what I mean? You're just like, dude, I can't. You just want something different. I don't eat fast food. I'm not a fast food guy, but we'll do like fast food sometimes on the challenge and they'll like bring like Burger King, McDonald's, whatever. And it is like, it's just like, it just feels like, you know, this feels like home, man. You know, you need that, especially after. Yeah, dude. God, like the Thai food. For that long. What's the bathroom situation like at these challenge houses? Bathroom situation usually isn't bad unless you're in a bunker underground, unless you're in a Soviet era anti-aircraft missile bunker underground for eight weeks, then the bathroom situation is terrible. <laughs> so we, that was a on, weird season. On to tell me about it. On total, my my therapist agrees with you. On total <laughs> madness, <laughs> he's like, "What the fuck do you sign yourself up for?" On total madness, uh, this dude, this missile bunker had been out of commission since like the '80s. So they're like, "Yeah, man, we'll just like open this up and put 30 people in it." So the bathrooms obviously hadn't been used, and they're not meant to accommodate that many people. Night one, all the plumbing goes to shit. Okay, <laughs> just not working. Uh -huh. Someone took a shit in one of the urinals. Like I don't know, dude. But all the plumbing, girls are flushing tampons down the toilet. It's like, you can't do this. Like, like guys, like this plumbing is like old, like just whatever. So shut down the bathroom, shut no. down the toilet. So what they did is they put porta potties. Now we're in the Czech Republic in the middle of winter. Come on. So they put porta potties outside the missile bunker. Now, most people have never been in a missile bunker and you probably never will be. Why would you ever have been in a missile bunker? But it's <laughs> a, it, we timed it. It's a five minute walk one way they get from our bedroom because it's like this court it's it's a series of like hallways and corridors and like then you have to walk through this massive they called it the uh they called it uh what the hell was it called i don't know it was the big room where like they literally used to have intercontinental ballistic missiles on like trucks you have to walk outside and this little courtyard where these porta potties were and it's Dude, frozen shut. You'd have to wait, like crack the door open because it was frozen. There's like frost on the toilet seat. A good day would be like when you peeked in there and it was just blue water. Like it's like, okay, they've cleaned out the porta potties. This obviously never made air. So what everyone started doing, at least the guys, we just started peeing in the showers. That's fair. Fair. So, I mean. That's completely fair, by the way. I would rather walk out of my room, walk into a shower and pee in the shower than walk 10 minutes to go and pee in a porta potty. You know, I mean, pretty much everyone just pees in the shower, whether they have to go to a porta potty or not. Yeah, dude. Let's be real. Yeah, say it in public right now. Every yeah. guy pisses in the Every shower. Every guy pees in the shower. Facts. 
Yeah, and, but at least bunker with, or not. But at least when I'd pee, I'd, 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 I'd like pee down the drain. Yeah, shoot for it. That's fine. And then you'd like turn the water and rinse it down. Nelson was pissing on the shower wall, <laughs> on the tile. That's Fuck just, it. See, not that's, washing it off. It, you'd walk in and it smelled like a, a homeless encampment. That's, You're like that's Nelson. Different. Can't you just pee down that's, the drain, dude? What are we different. doing? That's different. Yeah. That's not allowed. Uh, God, I never knew that. By the way. Um, all right, tell us about the Challenge docuseries coming out there, too. Massive Challenge docuseries comes out September. What's with it? What's the history on? of the challenge, man. It's uh, it's going to be awesome, dude. I mean, they literally went, they dug down and they found cast members. I mean, from, you know, challenge one all the way up to, to, to the current season. And it's basically a, um, you know, a, a living history of, you know, one of the greatest, if not the greatest reality television show ever on TV. And I mean, the people that that show has touched over the years, I mean, obviously, if you watch the trailer, I mean, Kim Kardashian was a challenge fan back. They got an interview with her. Um, but I mean, the people that have, have, have watched over the years, the people that grew up with the show, the people that it's changed me, my, myself included. I mean, I spent my 20s and 30s, two of the best decades of my life on this show and on reality TV. Um, and I always say I wouldn't be the person that I am today without this show and the experiences that I've had with it and and, and the way it's changed me. And I've, I've I got this unique opportunity that nobody gets to, to literally watch myself on television grow up. I'm like, yeah. you know, Truman from from the Truman show. Um, but it's going to be the first time that they it's it's, it's going to be, a, I believe, a three part series. Um, and again, it's going to document the, the, the challenge from its from its inception through its evolution to what it's become now. Um, and uh, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a really cool story. So anyone that's a challenge fan, whether you whether you're you just started watching the show or you or you've been someone who's watching from the beginning, you're just a casual viewer, there's gonna be some something for everyone and you're gonna learn a lot about the show and a lot about the people. And you're gonna hear a lot of stories that um you know that that, that you never heard. So it's gonna be it's gonna be good. I like that. Where yeah. is it where's it airing on? Uh MTV, I believe. That makes sense. If not, I'll tell you right now. That Hold makes on. Sense. Let me <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let me check. I should probably know this. Although I wasn't prepared for that question. You really, you really, you really got that. Me was the that. curveball of all the questions. That God, was the curveball. What a curveball. <laughs> I... If someone wanted to watch this show, where and how would they click? What 16 streaming platforms would they need to click? It's called The Challenge on Untold History and it premiered. Oh, uh, MTV. September 21st, 8 p.m. on MTV. Fucking crush it. You just edit that little part yeah, out. Yeah. Where I didn't know. <laughs> just clip that together. Um, we do. I have some more challenge questions that we have. We need to get a little deeper on this. So yeah. another thing, um, you've had a massive career doing a lot of different things since the challenge. What's what's made you the most money since the challenge? Like what's been the most successful thing that you've done? Not my only fans. Cause I don't have one of those. Shit. Although, although a lot of people have been telling me I should get one. They're like, dude, why are you putting post and picture of your feet on your, uh, I didn't, which I didn't realize people were so weird about. Uh, for free, you could be making uh, millions of dollars off this. So, um, I mean, I guess I'd have to say just uh, endorsements that I've gotten and uh, just other shows that I have and, and, and other opportunities that I've gotten, television shows basically that have spawned off of my notoriety and appearances yeah. from the challenge, you know? It's, it's just been um, kind of now, violent. you know, I, I uh, hosted a, a, a travel show for a long time on NBC. Um, I've done sh shows on, on on Food Network. I've done cameos in in some pretty big movies. Uh, I'm currently doing a podcast on the Ringer Network. Um, I just you know signed with uh, DraftKings, so I'm you know on the on the DraftKings team now. So um, so it's cool, man. I mean the the the, the doors and the opportunities that being on the show uh, ha has opened up are, are pretty magical, dude. How did and that Ringer deal happen? Bill Simmons, yeah, who's a huge dude. I mean, he's been a fan of of uh, the challenge since again, dude, years ago. I remember, I'll never forget the first time me me and Bill even met. Obviously, I was a fan of his for years. You know, watching on ESPN and stuff as an analyst. He he slid into my Twitter DMs. Classic. He's like, "Bananas, huge fan. When can I take you out to dinner?" I'm like, "All right, yeah, whenever." And this is when he was still at ESPN, and this is before the Ringer even started, and um. This he had started Grantland, which was the kind of before. Yeah, yeah. And he was like, you know what? I think you're every besides your wins, beside what you bring to the show. I think your biggest uh, attribute you bring to the show are your toasts that you give out every season. So he actually had me give the toast at the Grantland three year anniversary party at his house. 
And then he started the ringer and then he hit me up. He's like, dude, I, I want you to do a, a, a podcast about the challenge. And I was like, you know, can't say no to, you know, I can't say no to him. So from as podcasters, the ringer is just like one of the meccas, right? Yeah. Podcasting. Yeah, dude. Monster. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, dude, he's, yeah, he's, he created, he created a monster. Dude. That guy, guy knows what he's doing. Yeah. That was a big one. That's he big. hired me. So the guy's definitely, definitely got his head screwed on straight. Absolutely you know? <laughs> making the right moves yeah. every way he possibly can. Hell yeah. They call us the Ringer Junior. You know, that's pretty much what they call Junior us. Ringers. <laughs> Junior Ringers. Yeah, exactly. Um, by the way, how did the NBC show happen? That was a really cool show that you were doing. Yeah. So, um, first look. Yep. It, uh, that was, that actually transpired again. Uh, it was at, I was at a, one of our reunion shows. Uh, it was for Dirty 30, I believe. And um, this girl who I'm actually really close with to this day, Karina, who was uh, a booker at uh, NBC. She'd do booking for, for bookings for a bunch of different shows, was a huge challenge fan. Um, the hosting opportunity just had just opened up and she's like, would you ever, would you want to host a travel show? And I'm like, duh. Sure. You know, does the Pope shit in his hat? Um, Yes. So she's like, yeah, I'll, you know, I'll get you in, uh, you know, and, and that's how, uh, so she got me an interview with the, with the powers that be, but it all spawned from her being a fan of the challenge, uh, her putting in a good word for me. And, uh, you know, that was, so that's how that all transpired. I feel like being paid to fly around to cool places and do cool stuff while everyone else does like the, like the setting up work. Yeah. And you just, it's a, kind of, it's, it's a lot of work though, dude. So what, what made it difficult? What, what the reason that the hosting is so, is so difficult is because especially from the challenge when you're on the challenge there's you know 30 other people to to carry the to carry the load true when when you're hosting it's like the entire show like you have to carry the the whole show you know Funny, what i mean it all formed, involves witty. and that was the problem was finding that balance dude because when i first started hosting everything i thought everything had to be some sort of like tongue in cheek sarcastic like Fun quip right. sure and i was very bad at letting other people talk Right. I was I'm, I've always been a terrible listener. I've always been a good talker. So it was like being able to be interested and not interesting was one of the hardest things for me to do and not step on people and not interject when they're in the middle of a thought. Not if I find if they say something funny, not like just jumping right in and saying it and learning that, like, not everything has to be a joke and not everything. Ha because then what, ha what tends to happen and I I've noticed and I've realized this from watching old episodes when I first started hosting. I don't even take myself seriously. Right. I'm like, dude, like say something serious for once, you know? And, and, and one of the best pieces of advice I ever get, I ever got was a well-timed joke every now and then will help the information go down. So if everything's a joke, people aren't going to take you seriously. But then if, you know, but then if everything's really serious and everything's dry, they're not going to want to watch it. So it's like, you have to know when to like drop a well-timed joke in there, find that place and it'll help the information go down. But it took, it was, it was a difficult transition to make, dude, going from reality TV to being a host. Um, but I love it because dude, now it's, it's really like, I've it's helped me tap into this whole other aspect of my television persona that I didn't even know existed before, you know, even like podcasting, you know, you sometimes you feel awkward when you're not saying something yeah. that you think you're supposed to, when you're yeah. listening to someone and the camera's pointing at you and, and you're just engaging and listening and you like, and you feel a little weird. You, takes a while to learn that yeah. skill. So I actually agree with that, especially when, cause we interview people every single week, week in and week out and trying to find that balance of right. Funny, but informative yes. inform information, give me a story, but we need to be involved. Mm -hmm. There's actually normally a third co-host here as well. So like there's a lot of personalities in a room. So different than maybe being just one person yeah. on that show. But a cool, once you figure, you figure it out that I watched some of the episodes and it's a cool premise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's called, you know, the, the, the it's first look because, you know, it's giving a lot of people the first look into something, a, a, a location, a, a an industry, a job a, what, that they've never seen before. So it's like them living vicariously and seeing it through my eyes, you yeah. know? Uh, but I mean, dude, it's, I, I always saw it as kind of like a stepping stone towards like the next big, uh, you know, move I'm gonna make. And, uh, you know, obviously I love the time that I spent there and, and I'm going to, you know, forever treasure, you know, the memories that I spent with them. But it was time to get it was time to leave the nest. And, uh, you know, because that's the other thing is, is as amazing right of experience as it was the amount of time that it required. I mean, dude, one episode sometimes took seven, eight days to film. And I was doing 21 episodes a season. 
So it was like every free second that I wasn't doing the challenge, it was like, well, well, we need you. And it didn't Going give on. me any opportunity to, pers to pursue any of the other ventures that I wanted to do. So now it's like really opened up my time and the, the, the ability for me to, you know, do, you know, amazing things like come to Vegas and come on this podcast. There it is. <laughs> Sorry, no more travel show people, but you get this. Yes, yeah, but you get. This. I'd say it's it was. I'd, I'd say, listen, man, I'd fair say it's trade. a pretty fair trade. Dude. Fair yeah. trade, yeah. absolutely. This is a heater episode too, by the way. Sorry, yeah. NBC. You know <laughs> what I mean? Uh, all right, back to back questions, real quick, fast ones off the dome. What's a challenge moment that you wish MTV had aired that no one ever saw? Uh, probably the greatest prank of all time when we hit Jemmy with the yoga ball covered in ketchup because she has a uh, she has a mortal what? fear of ketchup and we did we plotted this whole thing it was amazing dude we were dressed as ninjas we like set this it was the it was the most elaborate prank ever in the history of the show and i lured her out under this balcony ct was on top of this balcony with a yoga ball smeared in ketchup <laughs> drills her in the back of the head covers her in ketchup dude it was like the greatest moment ever and she freaked out so badly that they pulled it from the, they, they didn't show it. it. Yeah. Well, if you have any footage, we'll make a nice clip right now. You know? Yeah, we'll I wish show, I did. We'll show uh, the world. We'll I wish world. I did, dude. Yeah. Uh, by the way, fear of ketchup. Seems extreme. More tooth phobia. I actually looked it up. It's a real people. It's actually fear of condiments. People have different fears of different condiments, but it was a, a legit, like a mortal fear, dude. Mustard, mayo. The, so yes, I, I'm assuming that's people do have but hers fears of those, but hers was ketchup. Wow. Yeah. That's weird. That's crazy. Yeah, okay. Very weird, dude. <laughs> okay. Very All right. Weird. What's a challenge moment that you wished hadn't aired? Oh God, dude. I, I, I used to, I used to say the banana backpack, classic. but I don't anymore. You know why? Because that's one of those moments that it's such an iconic moment. It's classic. I just have to, I just, I just got to the point where I'm just like, you know, if you can't beat them, join them. And I agree. It's an amazing, it's an amazing, I, I was, I was in denial for many years, and I'm like, this sucks. Stop showing it. But now I'm just like, dude, you just got, you just got, to, you just got to own it. It's a great moment. Um, the, flip, the flip side, there was a lot of success after that. So you know I'd say I mean? the whole season of the, I'd say the whole season of the island. We can just, other than my win, we can just delete that. <laughs> That's the, those are, I like to say those are like my dark days. That's the best part about TV. You just don't have that option ever. You yeah, know, just lives, I know, dude. For oh, dude. And the problems, I'm still getting messages from people. They're like, oh my God, I watched the island the other day. You were such an asshole. All right, first of all, I was 24 years old. Second of all, I was starving on an island with the most awful human beings on planet Earth. Sorry I wasn't a little better tempered, dude. You know what I mean? But yeah, yeah. I just, I just if I could go back. If I, ha if I had to watch myself in my... 20s. Oh no, yes, dude. You couldn't. You couldn't. It don't would just get be like, that. No. Because the, my my memory of it is probably not the same as if a camera it's was filming. Definitely it. not. <laughs> like my memory is for sure. No, like, you probably thought. You, looking back, you're like, oh, dude, I was the cool. The I think myself, I'm like, I was the coolest guy ever. The way I dressed, the way I talked, my hair. I look back and I'm like, Jesus Christ, <laughs> what did you fucking get dressed in the dark, buddy? That's you like, lose wait, a bet. What the hell's? What, what's that? Like, what are you doing with your hair? Oh, <laughs> but when like Instagram isn't. Old enough, but when you go on Facebook, like you get like a Facebook memory. Yeah, oh, dude. And you're like, oh my God, God, please it's, stop that. It's like, you know, when you open up your phone, sometimes take a picture and the front force facing camera hits you. <laughs> and you're like, ah, <laughs> that's how like old pictures are. You're like, what were you thinking? Who is that guy? Uh, yeah. Another one real quick. Uh, are the challenge finals as hard as they look harder? So some are and some aren't. Um, the, 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 back in the day, the finals, I, I will contend to this day, and I don't give a shit what anybody says, Rivals 1 was the hardest final we've ever done in the history of the show. Um, because it was start at point A, end at point B. And it, you, just, you just go and they follow you. Now, for television purposes, they do. it's more like checkpoint oriented. So it's like, all right, you're going to go here. You're going to do whatever this task is then we're going to relocate you to this other area so a lot of times you have like breaks in between which didn't used to be like that they'll drive you in trucks or sometimes even fly you in a helicopter to like to another location they're still difficult but it's not one long grueling you know just point a to point b uh final uh but i mean they, they have to do that a lot of times for like television purposes i mean you know you got to go to different locations because, you know, you, you want a cool backdrop. You, you, there's certain things you can't do in certain locations that you can do that you can in others. So I get it. Uh, but make no mistake, dude, the challenges, are, the, the finals are absolutely brutal, especially 
if I showed up day one, because usually everyone shows up, they're in the best shape they're going to be the entire season. If I showed up day one, those finals would be difficult. Mind you, we've now been in the house for sometimes up to 10 weeks. That's true. Not working out. I mean, you're working out, but you're never making any gains. You're just lucky if you're maintaining. Survival mode. All right? Not sleeping right, not eating right, drinking all the time. Dude, anxiety is through the fucking roof. Mentally, you're fried. Physically, you're a shell of what you were showing up. Then it's like, now you're going to run a final that you had to be in great shape with, you know, to do from the beginning. So um, they're, they're brutal, dude. They're, they're brutal. There's some pretty impressive physiques, though, on the yeah, show. Yeah, there are. Some pretty unimpressive physiques, too. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's, that goes both ways. There's certain people I'm like, you did realize that you were signing up for a physical competition, right? Like, yeah, they're, no. yeah this, is, this wasn't Iron Chef. Like, you know, you got to kind of be in like they, good shape coming on here. They're just dude. trying to get as many episodes as they can to get a couple Instagram it's, followers. It's the, the uh, I'm happy to be here program. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. Uh, by the way, everyone always, we ask like some money questions sometimes to people about winning things. When you win the challenge, when is that money hit? Is it one big payment? No. Is it over time? It's two payments, one on the first episode and one on the last episode. Um, and I think they do that just in case you break some rules in while the show's airing. They can be like, eh, we're going to dock your pay a little bit, buddy. So, oh, yeah. got, got it, got it, got so it. Been there, win, done that. <laughs> so, so if you win, they give you half of it when the first episode yep. airs. And then when the entire season's completed, they give you the other half. Yep. Behave, That's smart. Behave, yeah. Behave, winner, behave. I know, dude. I've had checks. I've had checks that I had to pause bounce, uh, because I did something stupid during the season and they just canceled my check. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Caught a fifteen thousand dollar fine for having a cell phone. Really? Yeah. Is that the is that the fine for for if you get the maximum the is sixteen thousand and they hit me for fifteen. Uh, so yeah, mostly have, because it's me and they back example. in the day did not did not like me. Yeah. Wait, do you even have access to them? I thought they just took them all. They do, but you, you give them a burner and you keep the other one. <laughs> you went straight prison <laughs> burner, uh, straight, straight burner, challenge? buddy. Guess where they found my phone? In my mattress. I cut a hole in my mattress and shoved it in my mattress. It's contraband. It actually legit. It's prison, dude. Prison. I, I wasn't kidding about the white collar prison thing. That's great, actually. I love yeah. that. That's a good story. Um, all right. Corey Warden boxes tomorrow. Yeah. How's he going to do? Well, I've, I'm a bit concerned after seeing this. The, the, what do they call it? The square up where they were the, what do they call that? The stare down. The stare, the stare down. down. Yeah. And he actually clipped the dude, but it didn't really seem to phase him. So I'm like, all right, Corey, I hope you got a little more behind your punches in the fight tomorrow. All right. I will say this. I mean, listen, this other guy he's fighting, the fuck's this guy from? Uh, this is a social media dude. Yeah, social like, media whose guy. line is it anyway? What's it called? Yeah. Uh, hotter than? Oh, is he like, is he one of those guys? Hotter, hotter than hell or something? Love Island or something? What? Too hot to handle. Too hot to handle. There you go. Uh, his outfit wasn't. The guy was wearing a purse and fucking boots. He tried to chase Corey down. I thought it was the funniest thing Got ever. The male purse thing is getting out of it's control. It's too much. Yeah, I can't dude. Do it. Yeah, action. I mean, this guy can't showed up to the weigh-in or the 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 face-off. Looked like he was like supposed to be like with his family at Disneyland. But um, <laughs> uh, no. Listen, all my money's on on Corey. Obviously, I will say that guy is a. Uh, I've seen him do some pretty I impressive things with his hands in the past. Um. Let's just hope it's not a. Uh, I mean, if these guys were going head to head and who could, who's more fertile and who could get have more babies, Corey's definitely winning Corey's that a w. one. Winning. Corey's a W. Dubs. Uh, yeah, but uh, no, obviously pulling for Corey. I think he's gonna. I think he's gonna win, dude. Would yeah. you ever do the celebrity? Fuck boxing no, thing? dude. I'm not, dude. I my face is too pretty, man. I don't want to get hit in my face. See you at the challenge. You I've guys never liked it. getting hit, dude. I, I, maybe this makes you weird. I've never liked getting hit in the face, dude. Ever. If we have to put pads <laughs> on and run into each other, fine. But like guys who do, I'm like, yo, more power to you, dude. I don't want to get, do not want to get punched in the face, dude. Yeah, no, it's never been my, never been my jam. That's fair. Yeah, I feel like that's not a shocker to the wall. Yeah, right. no, I'm, you're I'm not good. gonna believe this, but I'm good. Uh, I'm 40 now, dude. I'm like, all right. If I was gonna do that, if I was gonna fight people, if I was gonna box, I would have done it when I was like younger and yeah, had a little more younger. testosterone coursing through my veins. Yeah. Uh, speaking of that, Corey, when he was on the show, claimed that some guys on the challenge using steroids. Is this true? I mean, here's the deal. If you look at, here, here's how you can tell. You'll see guys that show up day one, jacked, bro. Can't fit through a doorway. By the end of the show, they look like a fucking string bean. It's like, you know what's funny about the UK guys though? The UK guys, because I guess in the UK, they just, they were so open and honest about it, dude. Joss, Kyle, Rogan. They'd walk in and be like, yeah, man. They call it gear. That's what yeah, they, that's yeah, the gear, nickname, gear. 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 Oh, yeah, they took my gear away. Kyle would be like, 
I feel like in two weeks, I'm going to look a little bit smaller. <laughs> <laughs> so it was funny. Like, they didn't care, dude. But my thing is, I've always thought that coming in jacked and the whole steroid situation is just stupid anyways, because the majority of the shit we have to do, steroids ain't going to help with. Nothing to do with it. You look at the big... It's very rare that the biggest, strongest, most jacked dude wins anything. Yeah. It's always the more agile, nimble guy that has like endurance, endurance. that's gonna that's gonna win you gotta yeah last. you show up okay yeah you look great with your shirt off and it might be intimidating for a little bit and if we have to go into a hall brawl or pole wrestle don't want to see you in the end of, other end of that but nine times out of ten what you're going to be doing is not going to involve the biggest strongest guy it's going to involve the most agile most nimble most shifty most athletic those are the guys that scare me, dude. Not the, smart. Not the gas head, dude. You know. I feel like the puzzles is what gets everybody. Anyways, you're looking at you're looking at a guy that the, has gotten got by a puzzle more than once, dude. So how do you train for puzzles? I don't know because I don't. Okay, I probably should go <laughs> to Cracker Barrel. I guess there I don't know. Go. There you go. I mean, that's it, it's so funny because that is something that I. It's like in all the years, I, I I can't tell you how many times puzzles have been my undoing, and I'm still like, yeah, I'll just. Get one that I know. And it's like, no, nah, I should probably be working on puzzles. Probably should. I mean, it's probably one of those things is like, how do you practice for that? Like, what do you, what do you do? You just do crossword puzzles or I, like, huh? LSAT yeah. yeah LSAT just, yeah. prep. Yeah. Or like, uh, there's apps you can do. Just a mind game. Thing? I think what it is, is, uh, it's not like you're never, ne never going to necessarily see the same puzzle, but I think it's like, they say your mind's a muscle and it's like the more you train it in puzzles and to think that way, the better you're going to get at doing it. And here I am giving advice on how to do puzzles and I don't even practice doing puzzles. So maybe I should take my own advice. There you go. I'm gonna, or on the way. I'm going to go download the, uh, <laughs> there's an app. I forget what it's called. TJ actually plays it all the time uh, that I'm probably going to start doing just so I can, you know, get my mind ready for, for the next one. So last question is too, we love TJ. He was one of our original first guests on the show. What's your relationship with TJ Lavin? Fucking hate that piece of shit. God, damn, that guy. Um, TJ is one of the greatest human beings I've ever met in my entire life, dude. Uh, he is one of the kindest, just, I mean, the guy, I've watched him, dude. We've been in, like, we're in foreign countries, and, like, a lot of times we'll be in, like, I don't know, Central America, Southeast Asia, so there's a lot of bugs everywhere. TJ will literally find a bug on the ground and, like, save it. He'll, like, go put it in the bushes. If he sees it, like, like he's just what We were in South Africa. This guy would literally pick up hitchhikers, all right? And like, give him a ride wherever he, he showed me this video where literally he's in the car and he's, and he's recording himself and he's got like four hitchhikers in the back and he's singing, uh, uh, Bob Marley, everything's going to be all right to these guys. And they're all sitting there looking around like, who the fuck should we, should he be worried? He just picked up hitchhikers or should we be worried that this psycho is fucking picked us up and is now singing Bob Marley? Like, I mean, so everywhere that guy goes, dude, he just, he just, he, TJ leaves places better than he found them. You know what I mean? Um, you know, Leroy's favorite story is the time TJ picked up a homeless guy and took him home. And I'm like, uh, Leroy, homeless guy doesn't have a home. So I don't know how that happened. Uh, but yeah, dude, I mean, just he just does so much nice shit for so many people. Um, and, you know, this challenge would not be the same without him. TJ is the challenge. One of the most you humble, know, nice guys that we have met. Awesome so humble, nice. so amazing. We'll give you the shirt off of his back any day of the week. And uh, yeah, I'm uh, the challenge is lucky to have him. I'm lucky to have him. Uh, I will say this. Every time I hear a fucking foghorn, I have this like instant like fit of anxiety right. no matter where I'm at. Yeah. It's like, TJ, you've now like you've now like conditioned me to be absolutely terrified of the sound of a foghorn. It sucks to like someone so much that's feeding you all the bet, like the scary, <laughs> scary and shit. Dude, we'll do, we'll do, <laughs> and you know what? Yeah, dude, we'll do, we'll do like trivia challenges. We're dangling, you know, 30 feet over the water and he has the control of, of dropping us in and he gets his sixth sense of satisfaction out his of it. His evil laugh when he does that is great. And it's always like, you wouldn't do this either. He goes, you're damn right I wouldn't. So yeah, yeah. but you know, love TJ, great guy. I love it, man. Johnny, awesome episode, man. Thank you for coming on. Thanks for having Doing me. It. Guys, yeah. Johnny Bananas, following all social media platforms. Very soon, TikTok is in to get the name back. <laughs> Listen to the podcast. Yeah. The whole nine yards. Challenge docuseries coming out soon and possibly a challenge season very, 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 very in the near future. And if you guys love the challenge and you want to listen to everything challenge uh, related, the Death Taxes and Bananas podcast on The Ringer, you won't regret it. Let's go. Guys, Residency Podcast. We'll see you next week. Let's go.